Hi, welcome back to the Art Crate. So um, today I am working on uh, printmaking again um, with some fossilized rubber fish that I have had for, I don't know, a very, very long time and I've never actually used them. Um, they've been hanging around in my art stuff. Some of them are missing pieces of the mouth um, because I'm super careless with my art things. So um, they're really cool. I just, I've never used them and they just, they feel kind of weird. So um, I decided today that I um, I'm going to try to print make with them and I have a lot of different materials I'm going to experiment with. I have not used these. I've practiced a little bit. Um, this is from years ago and I think this is just traditional acrylic paint. Um, and I just, um, I never really used them again. And then earlier I was trying to figure out, um, what kind of, if I wanted to use acrylic or if I wanted to use like, um, acrylic inks. Um, they're, they're, um, a thinner, it's like more ink based. And I thought that would be kind of cool to practice on and just to kind of play with. Um, I think I've got some of this, um, it's just acrylic, it's a, it's paint refill, um, but it's acrylic ink. It's just, I've got this brand and then I also have this brand here, um, FW, which is pretty well known. Um, I suppose you could also use just um, like the golden artist colors too, but I don't know if I'll get to those in this video. Um, I also want to try this. I haven't used this either. It's this brand. Um, it's a textile medium that you add to their paint um, to make it. It's just a, a fine artist paint acrylic matte flow acrylic, and it's for textiles because I found these um, really cool bags that I never used also. Um, so I'm gonna try to print, it's just like a canvas. So I'm gonna try to print um, on those too with, with this. But let's start with um, just the inks, um, which is the, the acrylic, it's just black. I'm gonna just try to use black so you guys can see. Um, but I also have some um, different materials here. I'm going to start out with some, like in my previous videos, I'm kind of obsessed with printmaking on um, this kind of, um, you know, the, um, what do you call it? The tracing paper. So, and I also have um, coffee filters I'm going to try. I've got the just basic white ones and I also have um, these guys. So, um, I've got cardboard and some different types of paper. So let's just get started. Um, you kind of see, I also, I don't really know what I'm doing. So, um, I'm just playing here because that's my favorite thing to do. So I'm going to start out with, um, a couple of these fish. I think I'll start out with this guy cause I already practiced with him and I just want to kind of get comfortable again. So this is my, um, it's real watery. It's like just super watery ink. So I guess it's paint. Um, let's see what it says on here. I use these for um, when I do my canvas, my painting, I put them in these big marker um, pens and they have these big felt nibs on them and they're super awesome. I think in my previous video um, with the sunflowers, I use this. Um, they come in like different sizes. Um, what is this brand again? I can't remember. I'm horrible. Um, anyways, a lot of um, graphic like mural people use them, um, but they're um, they're pretty cool. I'm new to these too, so they've got that ball in them. But the the ink that you buy for it is super watery, which is this. I keep calling it ink, but it's water based, so I don't know. Um, but you can, what I also used in that is just acrylic paint, just super watered down. So anyways, I am getting off track. So let's start with, um, I get this big brush. It seems to be the, the easiest for me. Um, and I'm not doing like a heavy, I've done some heavy pieces before on this earlier because I was kind of testing out this ink to decide what I wanted to do for this video. 
and it it comes out kind of interesting it's just either big blobs or not so just right along with me i'm gonna probably make all kinds of crazy weird marks with this so let's just i just did a thin base on here i'm gonna flip it over and see what happens i think it's gonna be upside down she okay so i'm just gonna kind of roll it i think it's very awkward to get a print because it's not flat so like i think the key is to just kind of roll it oh no i don't know so i'm gonna just kind of see what happens okay maybe i need more ink on here i'm gonna try it with a little bit more maybe go to the sides or maybe press down harder i have not seen these rubber fossil fish like i don't even know how i ended up with them i must have been on some kind of printmaking kick or something because i'm telling you these fish have moved in like i don't know 10 different houses with me that's why some of them are missing mouse but i just have never used them i may have intended to use them but i keep thinking this guy's upside down so let's try this again so i'm going to start with the tail and I'm going to kind of roll over. If you have these fish or any kind of rubberized fossil something, comment and let me know how you use them. They might be better for um, like textiles, you know, which I do have those little bags I showed you that I'm going to try them on. So that one came out a little bit better. So I think it's just like regular printmaking where you, it's just trial and error. So I'm going to let this guy dry because I'm super eager to try a different one. I want to try this one. He's missing his mouth. I don't care. Oh, you know what? I think it's missing a fin too. Let's go for it. This one's super rounded. Don't know. Don't know what's going to happen. I really like the texture in the fish like here, but I think they might be old because it's not really coming out when I print it. I guess some of it is, but I would have really liked to have those a little bit deeper. But it might just be because they've been in all my art gear forever and like worn down. They feel like big erasers, you guys. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of get this on here. I'm trying to get the edges because I noticed in some of my Others, like I was missing some of that edge work from the fin, so let's see what happens. I like this one. Is it a trout? It's a trout. Okay, so maybe roll it? Maybe? God, it's really pretty. I can see it. It's missing its mouth, but I don't think it's going to matter. Oh, I'm going to push the tail down a little bit more. May have just screwed that up. Oh! Oh my God, I really like it. Okay, All right, fishy, you're messy. Okay, so I'm gonna grab, you know what? I'm gonna actually play around with the tail a little bit because I've got space on my paper. Sure, I'm gonna see what happens here because I, I wanna use the tail. I have some little mini tiles and I wanna try I want to try it on that. So let me go over here. See, the tails seem to be the easiest for me because they're not super, they're kind of flat. They're like a stamp. Oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> okay, let's try the fish head. I'm going to try this fish head right here. I'm going to try to roll it. Maybe. I don't even know where you get these. I have no idea where I got them. Hey, okay. well, that's kind of cool. It'd be cool if it had the, the bottom, you know, like the bottom part of the mouth. I think it came out. But, you know, it still looks like a fish head to me. So I'm going to pour a little bit more of this in here. Super watery. It feels like black ink, but it does wash off my hands. So 
I'm pretty sure it's that super watered down acrylic. Okay, so I'm gonna actually try, I don't like to have empty pieces of paper, so I'm gonna get this tail and see, practice on this one. I think I'll put this one right over here. Let's see. Yeah, the tails are definitely easier. Oh, I really like that. Let's go for a double and see what happens. Woo! For third. See how much ink is on there. It's still kind of cool. All right. Good night, fishy, for a second. Okay, so anyways, that's kind of neat. I could see where it would be really cool on textile, like a, you know, like even just a t-shirt or whatever. Um, but... I guess you'd have to practice a lot. I like this one. It came out pretty decent. All right, I'm going to put this aside. And I'm going to grab some of, let's see, let's do some, let's do some coffee filters and see, see how this turns out. So this is basically the same, um, like in the other video with when I was printing on that tracing paper, um, it's the same kind of thing. It's just, it's a little bit, um, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel as plasticky, but I'm gonna show you. I do a lot of that printmaking um, for the texture on coffee filters too, because sometimes you can get them really cheap instead of the tracing paper. So let's try this guy with the missing chunk here out of his mouth. I think that was like a really thin piece too, so. All right, so I am just going to um, I'm going to actually get a piece of white paper under here so you can kind of see. Well, maybe actually, let me get this one. I use the back side. I use the back side here. Sorry, kind of crowded for space here. Okay, so let me get this up here so you can see decent. Okay. And then let's just cover this again. Uh, let's see. This one has a lot of texture. So hopefully, I don't think I've tried this one since the, uh, well, I haven't done any of these in any of my professional work. Um, but I did try this one with the, um, I think right after I got it with that white acrylic. And, um, and then I just never did it again. But I don't really have a lot of memory. Like, I don't think it, you know, of it. I don't think it was a horrible experience. I just wasn't sure how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see what happens with this. This is going to come right through into my hand. I'm sure of it. Mm, you know what? I'm going to try the tracing paper first so I get the whole fishy. Okay, so this is the tracing paper. And I'm just going to press it down. You can see it's already kind of coming through. Which is fine because I love I love getting messy. I can't do art without that experience. Oops, I just picked it up with my fingers. Oh, that's kind of cool. Hmm. I have to try that again. Let's see. Let's see. Let's try it with the, this guy. And some of these I think come out better with not the whole fish. Oh, if that makes sense, like this part of it. So I'm going to try this coffee filter. This is really coming through. So this just looks like texture to me. I'm going to try another one. And maybe there was too much ink on that. Maybe it's the coffee filter material. But I feel like it should print something cool like a fish oh I like that one so yeah it really depends on your ink so it's almost like the second run or not your ink but I guess the amount of ink acrylic ink um I like how that came out right there that that's something that I could definitely use in some of my paintings um this is pretty blotchy I'll use it anyways but not for looking like a fish maybe if it had its mouth all right, I wanna try, um, I found some, let's see. I wanna see if it prints on this. This is another coffee filter. So I wanna try this material of this coffee filter. I think it's a more of an upscale coffee filter. It's those ones that are in, they're, 
they kind of open up like this. Um, this one I cut, but maybe I'll use this one so it doesn't leak through so much, but let's see. I'm going to spread some of this black out and go for it. Ooh, oh, I like that. If it had its mouth right here, it'd be like, yeah, that's a fish. That's kind of cool. Let's see if it went through a little bit. Yeah, but that's good. I can just use that still. I can just separate it and use it in my paintings. I wonder if it'll have the same effect as the um, tracing paper that I use. I'm going to try the tail. So this is the coffee filter that I actually cut up. So it's just the one side. So I'm going to try this. See how it goes. Probably should have flipped it the other way. Oh well. I'm learning. I like that too. That's really cool. I love the texture. Yeah. So this kind of stuff you can just rip up and use as texture in your paintings or in your mixed media piece and that's why I like just kind of using odds and ends um, for that um, and just not specifically trying to make something right now. It's just kind of prepping for some papers that I can use in mixed media. So let's see. I feel like I should try another fish. I don't I didn't try this fish yet. This fish is not missing any of its body parts but it's definitely looks grumpy. So we're going to do it. Try it. Okay. So get the ink on here or the acrylic ink on here. It's got a skinny tail or fin. This fish might be missing a piece right there. I don't know. This is like an angel fish. Um, it might be missing a piece. It kind of looks like it is. I think they all are missing pieces, which doesn't surprise me. They have been floating around my life for probably, um, I don't know, 20 years. Okay, that's a long time. That's a very long time. So let's try the tracing or the, yeah, the tracing on here. There might be too much ink on here. So I'm gonna do two runs, see what happens. I like it. I like the angelfish. Yeah, I think it had a little guy that came out there. All right, that's run number one. Let's try the second one. See if it comes out any better. I want to try this angelfish. Um, on regular paper because I think that'd be neat. So I'm going to give that a shot next, but let's try to get all of this on here. Oh yeah. That's kind of cool. I mean, every time you print, it's completely different. So um, I kind of like it. So I'll use those at some point in my work. Um, but let's try this on this paper. I want to see how this ink, um, acrylic ink, actually goes on the paper instead of just that flimsy kind of tracing paper. And I feel like the tracing paper and the coffee filters might be a better fit for um, regular acrylic, not acrylic flow, which is much like ink. So um, I'll have to give that a shot another time. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the tail. I'm going to kind of roll it, get the fins, get the face, roll it over here. I don't know if this is the right way. It just feels like it might be the best. Um, I remember back in the day when I got these, I do remember now that I was a little bit frustrated with them because I wasn't sure how to use them. I still am not sure. 
And I missed the lungs. I don't know if it's the lungs. There's a big hole right here. I'm going to press down harder. Oh, yeah. Huh. What did I miss? What did I miss right here? Let's try. Let's try to push it down more. See if I can match it. I did. See, that's kind of cool, but I'm still... See, I'm in a fight with him. Oh, there. That's a little bit better. And then I also missed over here. So maybe there's a lot of room for, like, error here because you can kind of pick it up like a stamp and put it back down if you need to. I don't know. Huh. Kind of cool. Let's see if it's got any ink left. More ink or less ink? I don't know. Table shaking. Nope, nothing. All right. I do want to try this super textured one on regular paper and see if it comes out better than it did for the other the, uh, tracing paper. See what happens. And then I'm going to move on to my the weird paper and mediums and things that I found. But I just kind of wanted to get a feel for what these can do and like what they're supposed to do. I'm not sure. There's got to be somebody out there that's like really good at rolling these fish. Maybe it's a talent. I'm not sure I have it. Let's just try the tail. I feel like I have more success with the tails. But I'm telling you, you guys, these fish are super rounded and they feel really weird in my hand. And maybe it just takes practice. But if you're doing mixed media, it doesn't really matter. It's just you're just kind of after the texture. You're not looking for clean lines. So these are kind of cool for that. I like all that. That's cool lines. It doesn't have to be a fish. Okay. So I'm going to try, let's see, I want to try this paper. This is super old vintage music paper. I have no idea what it's going to do. Um, I haven't really used it much um, in anything, but let's see, let's see what happens. What is happening here? Okay. So... I think it's, I think I just did that fish. Let's try this one again. This might be the one that's not missing any pieces. I think it is. All right. Let's see what the vintage music paper does. I've seen a lot of people use the vintage music paper in like mixed media pieces or collage. Um, but I am not particularly a collage artist, but I do like to play around with stuff. So I think I'm going to lay the fish down and I think I'm going to um, just lay this on it. Let's we'll see what happens. Let's see, let me move it up here. All right, let's start with one end. This paper is pretty stiff. But it's not like watercolor quality stiff. So let's go and kind of peek at it. Oh, well, that was kind of cool. I like how that turned out. That's better than the um, this really thin coffee filter paper. That was just kind of bleeding the paper. So I'm going to try another one here. I don't know if it'll take a second print. Let's try it. I feel like it might not. That was a lot of ink that lifted up. Not so much. So with the thicker paper, um, it's just one, one round. With a thinner paper that is like the coffee filter paper or the tracing paper, it might have to be the second print might be more successful because I think that's just too thin. 
I wish I knew my fish so I could tell you what this is, but I don't. All right. So I'm going to try this big guy on here and see if it's the same. It seems like the thicker papers for this kind of printmaking has, it picks up the texture better. It actually feels better too. Um, kind of, it feels like it's getting a better print and it is is getting a better print. I still like this first one. But, so really it just is playing around, I suppose. So I'm gonna try to, um, let's see, I wanna try to print, get rid of the black. I had this idea where um, I could just do the tails on this circly piece of, I think this is watercolor paper. So this is kind of thick like the music paper. Um, I like how these turned out. I'm not sure how I would use them in my art because I don't, I don't usually use music paper, but we'll see. You never know. Okay, so what I want to try right now, let's see, I got to get a fish that's not so, that's not wet. Those are a little wet. So because I want to play with um, these inks right here, I want to try to do a rainbow around here. It might be a disaster, but I don't care. I'm going to try it. But the way I'm going to try it is I'm totally making this up. Let's just see. Let's see if you can see this. Yes. Okay. So let's start with red. Okay. Let's start with red. And I just want to do the tails. I'm going to do... I'm going to drip some on here because I don't know. I'm just experimenting. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Okay. So let's take a brush. I don't think it'll pick up the black, but it might. It's not completely dry, but a shot. Okay. So I'm just going after the tail here. See if I can it on this watercolor paper. It's a little bit more pressure for me right now because I don't, I don't know how this is gonna, I don't know if there's enough ink on here or not. And actually, I feel like there needs to be uh, more body, but okay, let's go for it. Let's just give it a shot. Okay, so I'm gonna start here, go here. So this is watercolor paper and these super um, just acrylic inks that are super inky like. So, all right, there's one. Let's try, let's do orange and let's get another fish in here. I don't know if I can fit multiples. This is the um, definition of uh, play art right now. Play and process art. I really am just doing exactly that. Okay. These are super watery, so they're just going to be like inks, not paint, which I am not super comfortable working with inks. It's not something I do all the time, but I have them. Because like any artist, I have to have all the things. So that picked up some of the black, which isn't too bad. It's all right. I'm okay with it. Maybe. Can't really pick it up. It's going to make it worse. So let's try yellow. I suppose I could wash this fish off. But I feel like it might not be necessary. I'm going to let this guy dry. Okay, let's get this trout. Let's do trout yellow. Let's see. It's going to probably pick up some of this black, but I'm not going to worry about it. See what happens. This one on here.
Yeah, a little bit too much ink, I think. I think I might be going overboard on the ink. But, and I also think this might be different with regular acrylics, but I don't know. That'll be maybe another video. But at least I'm working on um, trying to figure these guys out. Did I already do this one? I don't know. I'm going to do this one. Let's go for green. And maybe let's go for... Uh, let's maybe not... Oh, this is starting to pick up some of the black. I can see that already. So... Shake it off. Maybe not. Okay. Red, orange, yellow, green. Let's do this one here. And maybe with just basic acrylics, you have more, um, you know, control over, over it. But I kind of like what it's doing. It's kind of interesting. All right. Let's go back to this one. We've got two more colors and two more spaces and two more fish. Okay. Um, this on here. I think I need to rinse this out. Okay. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Kind of cool. Okay. A little bit too runny for me, but I still like it. I still might cut it up and use it or paint over it. All right, let's get this. This is not purple. It is um, phthalo blue red shade. It's the closest ink that I had to a purpley color. I think I really like these with um, the black, the black ink, black um, acrylic flow ink, the best. These are a bit more waterier, <laughs> waterier than my um, than that that other stuff I was using. So yeah, I like the um, I really like the color, the darker for sure. So now let's just really mess it up. Let's see if I can get. So yeah, we might need, um, if you're using these really flowy acrylic inks, probably two or three runs on them before you can actually get a decent print. But practice, practice, okay. I need to wash my fish off, but I think I'm going to leave them. I'm going to leave them. So I'm going to try, um, I'm going to move away from, let's see if I got everything. I did want to try cardboard first. I just want to try cardboard and see what happens with these inks. I don't think they're going to take because um, this is super watery, but I'm going to try with the black. It's a little bit thicker. So let's try this fishtail. I think this is my favorite fishtail. I'm just gonna bring that black. I'm not even washing it. I'm gonna bring it right over. Okay. Excuse me, fishy. Excuse me, fishy. Okay. So starting at the back, that seems to be where I'm most successful. And then I have to kind of roll it. I don't know how the cardboard's gonna take. Ooh, that's kind of cool. That's what I wanted was a fish tail. I like it. So I don't know. I think um, these very flowy inks, I'm going to say probably not a good idea on this whole stamping, printmaking, rubber fossil fish thing. Um, I'm glad I tried it, but I'm pretty sure um, it's just not for me because I kind of am a little bit more control freakish than that. So... Um, I also have these golden um, fluid acrylics, which actually 
I do have a black here. Let's just try this black. Try it. It's a, it, I think it's thicker than um, what I was using the other black. So I'm going to put a little bit right here. Yeah, it's definitely thicker. So I'm kind of interested to see um, what is going to happen. Oops, that was one with um, this fishtail. Let's try the same fishtail so you can see and I can see with a thicker um, paint. This is definitely thicker. I'm just going to go right to town here on this guy. Here we go. So let's see. I might need to do two because I kind of got a little bit, uh, a little bit, a lot of it of, um, you know, I'm going to switch this out so I can do a couple prints on this cardboard. All right. So this is the thicker golden acrylic. Um, this is carbon black. It's fluid acrylics. It is not acrylic ink. It is fluid acrylic, which I'm going to say already I really like. So that was the first run with the one that I just did. And without adding more ink, I've got the second one. So you can see now the texture is coming up. So let's try a third one. And there we go. So you can see that that is a much better way to go with the thicker um, fluid acrylics rather than the acrylic inks. I like that a lot. So now I'm going to just bite the bullet and I am going to pull out this um, tile. These are just regular um, tiles. I know um, like for your counter, I think um, that there's a, there's a material that I could buy to mix into the um, acrylic to the like the regular acrylic paint or fluid acrylic a thicker paint and then it'll it'll keep it on here but I do not have that so I am just going to go for it with this um with this acrylic um the golden fluid acrylic because that seemed to be working so let me go ahead and just put a little bit more here And see how it does on the tile. I have never printed on tile before. I have no idea what to expect. Um, so let's give it a shot. I'm sure I could, once it dries, I could spray it and try to seal it if I love it. I think I'm just going to go right. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm overthinking it like it's going to turn out to be a masterpiece because I can't help it. You never know what's going to be a masterpiece. Oh, I just slid it a little bit. Ooh, that is cool. Fishy tail. Look at that. I like it. I like it. Let's do another one. Let's do a fish head. I don't remember what was the best fish head. I think I'll do this guy. I don't know what it is. It reminds me of those flounder fish that are just flat because it is flat, but I, I it's not that it's, it's not, but okay. So let's try the fish head, take a chance. Get some of this fluid acrylic on here. I feel like I need a little bit more. Let's see if we can get a nice fish head. Get this flat. Okay. Hopefully I got enough on here. Here we go. This is not like the tail, so it's going to be weird. I got to roll it without making it slip on this super slippery tile. It's already slipping. I'm pressing too hard. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad, but I want the I want the mouth to be better. Didn't get that corner of the mouth. That 
I guess I could paint it. Well, that's kind of cool. I like the tail. I like the tail better. I have one more, so I'm going to do the tail. What should I do? Which tail should I do? Uh, maybe I'll do this tail. Alright. So if I need more on here. I think I need a little bit more. And then the last one I'm going to try is on that, um, on the, um, little bag, the canvas, the textile, and I'm going to actually use that um, textile medium to to set it. I guess it's used to set it. And you guys, this is another art material or medium that I bought that I've never used because I'm not a textile artist, but apparently sometimes I think I am. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this tail. It's really hard to not let this um, slip, like really hard. It's super slippery on this material. Okay, that's kind of cool. I like that. All right, well, that's my fishy um, tiles, because I'm, I'm a tile artist now, apparently. Okay. So my last one I'm going to go for here is um, these little bags. So I originally bought these to paint on and I haven't painted on them yet. But since my fish are already super dirty and it's the first time I've used them and it's kind of fun, I'm going to try on these bags. So let's go ahead and um, I wonder if I should do a color. Hmm, I think I'm just going to do black. Let's just stick it with black. Okay. So I'm going to get some more. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. Remember, remember, I'm going to use the um, Joe Sonja. Um, this is specifically, I bought this specifically um, for this textile medium because I was going to paint on these and I never did. And I don't even know if I've opened this. And I think it's it's not even opened yet. This is what I do. I buy things and then I put them on the shelf. And this is, um, this I don't know how long I've had it. And I don't even know how much to put in here. Um, two parts the color and one part the medium. Uh, painting a test strip is recommended. Well, I'm not a good listener, so I'm not painting a test strip. I'm going to go right to town on this. Okay. I wonder if this is empty. It's a little bit. Oh, this was gloss medium from the other tutorial that I did, but it's it's dry. We're gonna use it. If I open this, no. okay. So two parts to one part. So let's just say. What? I don't. I don't know how much two parts is to one part. I mean, not measuring. I know because I can count, but we're just gonna go for it. So let's just mix. Maybe that's, maybe that's right. Maybe it's not, but it's going to work. I'm going to mix it with my brush. Ooh, pretty. So apparently this textile medium is going to help it um, set on the, on the fabric, which is the textile. Oh, it's very stinky. Oh my goodness. Okay. It's very strong. Oh, she mama. Okay. I love these fish tiles. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do this one. I am not going to clean this. I wonder if I should do it. Maybe, maybe just the tails. I've been super like most successful with with the tails. So I'm going to stick to that. So I don't end the video <laughs> on great disappointment. So <laughs> let's just try this. Okay. I'm getting it kind of thick. It's very stinky. It smells like, I don't know, it smells like um, like something you would do, like paint that you would put on like the model cars. Okay. So, oh, my hands are so messy right now. Okay, that's okay. We're just practicing. So I'm going to go ahead. How far did I go up that way? Let's give this a shot. Okay. Oh, gosh. This feels real. Feels like a lot of pressure. It's just a bag. It's just a little canvas bag. 
Okay, I think I need more ink. Oh yeah, this is very thick. Okay, we are going to do more. We're going to do more of this. And we're going to do a little bit more of this. And it's very stinky still. I wonder if this is the brush I was using. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go right over that. I feel like I can probably see the lines and I might be all right. So let me get my fish up here, move over tiles. I need space. Okay, I'm going to paint this for real, really thick. This is so different than those inks, um, the, especially those acrylic inks, like real inks. Um, it, it's so different. It's very thick. And the the canvas is obviously going to take more. Um, because it's it's not paper. So I'm putting this on really thick this time and see what happens. I'm going to just um, go where I was. You know what? I'm not going to go where I was. I'm going to flip it. Change my mind. I'm flipping it and I'm going to, because I put so much more on here, I want to see if that's the right amount because, you know, I'm practicing. Okay. I don't know if I will ever be comfortable um, rolling this this rubber fish fossil. Like it feels very weird to me. All right, well, that's okay, but I'm not super loving it. Um, but I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna try the other side with maybe less less of the medium on here. Textile. Is very stinky. Okay, I'm not. I'm gonna stop telling you that right now. Let's give it another shot over here. See, not too bad. Maybe it just needs to stay for a minute. Maybe it needs a minute to like soak it up, or not. That's kind of cool. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna flip it. And I'm going to try something else. And that is just the flat part. Maybe I'm not very good at rolling the fish. Maybe that's where, that's what's happening right now. Let's see. See, I don't have to roll it because it's, um, it's just the flat part. And I feel like, yeah, it's still very, it's still very dry in there. So... Let's see. One more roll, you guys. What not well, not one more roll, one more shot. Because I have to stop using this textile medium. It's, um it, it feels um maybe it's just not right for me, but let's see. I'm gonna try to go right here. Uh, I just try to go right here. This I just put in a lot. I put on a lot on here. That might be the key. Huh, yep, it might be. Let's try another shot over here. I'm just gonna cover this with fishtail marks. I kind of like it better. Just trying to use it up. Huh. As you can see, um, I am not, I am, spreading ink everywhere. So I suppose if I was doing this in real life, I would um, maybe make sure my hands weren't a hot mess, but this isn't real life. So I'm just gonna cover this whole bag up because I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna hide my mistakes. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm doing right now is I'm hiding, I'm hiding my mistakes. Is it working? I think it's working. <laughs> yes, I like it. I would totally put something in this bag. I don't know what. And it kind of went through. So I, I think I'm supposed to put like a piece of cardboard or something in there. I think when you do textiles, you know, so it doesn't bleed through. That's it. So, all right. Well, thank you for going on this adventure with me. Um, I'm pretty sure this was a massive experience and experiment. Um, for me because I have not printed with these um, rubber fossilized fish 
I still don't know if I like them. They're very cool and weird, but I don't know how to use them yet. Um, but I do, I, I like the bag, but it would definitely take some patience, which I don't have, but I might do it again. Um, I, I like these. I, I just, I think that these are really cool and I, I might figure out how to seal them and then maybe make more. I don't know, but they are very cool. Maybe I should just become a tile print maker artist. Um, the cardboard came out really cool. Um, I don't know how I would use this in my art, um, but I, I liked printing on it. Um, it was, I don't know, it just, it felt right. Um, these little guys um, came out okay. Um, I will use these in my art by ripping them up like in my last video. I think that they'll they'll do um, they'll they'll work. This um, not so fond of. I think that my idea of having the fishtails would be really um, fun and cool and appealing. Maybe if I use the same fishtail around, and then also if I use this um, this fluid acrylic or just regular acrylic, and not these um, you know ink inky guys. Um, I think that was it. The music paper, actually this vintage music paper, I kind of like how that came out. If I was going to perfect the fossilized rubber fish, I might, um, if I could get a good print, if this would be kind of cool, just even framed up just like this, um, with a better print and on this vintage paper, I think that would be kind of a fun thing to do. Um, this um, was the other coffee filter, which I think in like a mixed media journal or something, um, that would be kind of cool too. Um, I think that these guys on this, this is just regular paper. It's not, um, it's not that thicker watercolor paper, um, but they, I like how that came out. Um, I have, this is the watercolor paper and it, it didn't do really, I don't, I don't think it, maybe the inks would have been better. I'm not really sure, but I do like the prints better on here. So, um, but that's it. So I think that's it. I think I covered everything on here. Oh, here's this one. I like this one. This came out really nice on this. Um, this is like more of a natural paper, that coffee filter. And I like how that came out. So that is it. So anyways, thank you for um, joining me today on my adventure with these fossilized rubber fish. If you find any, pick them up. They're fun to kind of play around with. Or they're just kind of um, a nice kind of weird thing to have in your studio for occasions. Um, but yeah, they're, they're neat. There's not even a name on them, so I can't even tell you guys... Um, where I got them, but I know it was like 20 years ago. So anyways, thanks for getting messy with me and um, joining me on this little art adventure. And um, make sure you um, subscribe and like and share and um, see what I'm going to do next. I'm not sure. I'll have to figure it out. I've got a lot of things over here I need to experiment with. So all right. Thanks for joining me.